previously on Believe Nothing. Is there any other business? Excellent. The collapse of Chinese communism will be completed tomorrow. Well done, Mao Zedong Jr. Your father must be revolving in his mausoleum. <laughs> that concludes this meeting of the Council for International Progress. Uh, what is it this time, Councillor Nabish? Well, I don't want to make waves, but we have got to do something about these caterers. We faked the moon landings, for Christ's sake. Is it too much to expect a decent prune Danish with my double decaf macchino? I mean, <laughs> hello. Goodbye. <laughs> we seem to have a situation vacant situation. Blah, 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 peerage. Blah, 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 knighthood. Blah, 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 Ulrika Johnson. <laughs> oh, the National Sperm Bank have had another run on my seed. <laughs> yeah, they want another deposit. That's rather flattering, sir. I know. They ought to oblige, but I'm not sure I can give a toss. <laughs> Is something wrong, sir, or are you doing your Cambodian sinus exercises? <laughs> no, no, I'm bored, Albumen. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. But that's the tax that genius pays to mediocrity. <laughs> uh. oh. Can I help in any way, sir? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I need a mighty challenge. I need to scale a virgin Himalaya. I need to take over a small but fabulously rich country. I need to... I need to have sex. Have sex with an alien species. <laughs> have we got Anne Robinson's telephone number? <laughs> no. I need that. Get me that. And don't bother to wrap it. <laughs> Albumen, you're drooling. Only out of respect, sir. <laughs> Is this a bad moment? No. No, no. No, this is a magnificent moment. Hello. I am quadruple professor Adonis Canute. I know, just relax, it's the same for everyone. <laughs> and yes, as a matter of fact, there is a vacancy on my course. Or if you'd like, I'll start a new one up for you personally. Quadruple professor, or may I call you a Knut? <laughs> I'm not a student, and Dr. Awkward. Oh, so you're the new professor of pedantics? Well, I've been provisionally appointed to the chair of pedantics, but technically I remained a mere senior lecturer until approved at a college senate meeting in full convocation the day after New Moon, although I use the word approved. Okay, okay, but surely your advancement is a foregone conclusion. Oh, Dr. Awkward, you are the most pedantic person I have ever met. <laughs> I am one vote short of the requisite two-thirds majority, unless before the end of crucifixion term at least one senator changes his mind, I will be compelled to resign. Yeah. Worry not. You can count on my support. Actually... <laughs> you voted against me. I? Yes. And if I may quote your entry in the college comments book, I utterly abhor the notion of women infesting this ancient college and clogging up our antique water closets with their accursed panty liners. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, that was my fault, sir. The professor gave me his comments in Greek, as is traditional. And you mistranslated? Sir! <laughs> Gentlemen, sir! Punish yourself. Sir! Good man. Oh, please, forgive my factotum. Sometimes he doesn't know his Aristotle from his Plato. <laughs> please sit down. Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> May I offer you something to eat? Albumen makes the most scrumptious currant buns. If you think I look like an elephant, say so. That's ridiculous. Is it ridiculous to loathe living inside this huge, misshapen body? <laughs> to be test having to go through life avoiding every mirror, every... Polished surface, every every limpid pool. <laughs> <laughs> the 
first time this century, I meet a woman with a brain that dimly compares to mine and a body worthy of accommodating my tadpoles. <laughs> and she turns out to be raving mad. If it's any consolation, sir, the best sex I ever had was with a mad woman. <laughs> Janet Street Porter isn't mad. It's just the way she stands. And those teeth. They come out, sir. <laughs> Do they? Oh, I've got to go to the toilet. <laughs> This place is disgusting. This is filthier than the elephant man's handkerchief. <laughs> oh, well. But perhaps at least here I can obtain some mindless sex. Might help me take my mind off the beautiful but unavailable Hannah Awkward. The new barmaid's very liberal with her favours, sir. How liberal? Paddy Ashdown. <laughs> That's liberal. And democratic. <laughs> well then. Here goes. Watch the master. Mm. Hello, darling. Here's five pounds to get your memories out. <laughs> Mind you, I can see four pounds worth already. <laughs> Doris! Professor Canoon is Oxford's leading moral philosopher. Well, then he should know it's immoral to show tits for less than a tenner. <laughs> Is everyone hypnotised? Shh, shh, sir, get rich quick, it's starting. Well, what on earth? Shh, shh, sir, 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 sir. If they find out you don't watch Get Rich Quick, they'll take you outside and burn you as a witch. Good evening, greedy buggers. I'm Lance Boyle, and tonight, going gaga for that 50 million euro top prize is a Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali, former Secretary General of the United Nations. <laughs> Mind if I call you Boutros 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 Boutros? Actually, I do. Well, Boutros Boutros, we'll try to give you an easy one to start with. What is the latest published figure for the gross national product of Venezuela? Uh, $67,333 million. Johnny! <laughs> 54000 Four hundred and eighty-eight million dollars. What a klutz. <laughs> That's the gross domestic product. <laughs> the right answer, of course, is sixty-seven thousand three hundred and thirty-three million dollars. <laughs> well, everyone knows that, don't they? Filthy night? No, thank you. <laughs> I am Lefanu. I'm from the Council for International Progress, the shadowy underground organization which controls all the governments and corporations in the world and manipulates the fates of billions of people for its own purposes. I've come to offer you a mission of the utmost gravity. Oh, please. Do I look like the sort of credulous Daily Mail reader who'd fall for such simple-minded X-Files claptrap? Excellent. You'll pass the first test. <laughs> Anyone who believes in the Council without evidence is unsuitable. But what if I were to prove to you that the Council has just overthrown the government of China? Now you're talking. I've been talking the whole time. <laughs> Are you, perchance, German? <laughs> we interrupt this program for an historic newsflash. The People's Republic of China has been privatized and will start trading tomorrow on the New York Stock Exchange. Tell me more about this mission. We need you to convince the entire British population to eat only genetically modified food. Of course. That is utterly, utterly brilliant. And so obvious. It's still not obvious to me, sir. <laughs> Look, until recently, the Chinese were poor and could only afford to eat rice, or the occasional American spy. <laughs> and that meant that there was plenty of proper food for rich people in the West. Lobster, fillet steak, unpasteurized camel bear. <laughs> but with the Chinese turning capitalist, there won't be enough real food to go around, so we have got to get 
Mr. and Mrs. Ordinary to eat GM food and nothing else. Is that safe, sir? Better than safe. Genetic modification means grapes the size of apples, apples the size of melons, and chickens with 30 drumsticks. <laughs> That'd be rather like eating the Dagenham Girl Pipers, sir. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, do you? <laughs> Dr. Awkward, please, come in. Stay. Forever. I'd rather not, but I do need to use your telephone. Mine's permanently engaged. Ah, that's because I've taken over the entire college network in order to get Albion onto his favourite television programme. <laughs> was an important call. I was just going to have my regular chat with the Samaritans about my disgusting and obese form. Oh. Well, talk to me. Talk to me. I was trained as a Samaritan. Yes, I was. But I had to resign, unfortunately. I was so good at answering callers' problems that all the other Samaritans lost their jobs and became suicidal. <laughs> there were bodies everywhere. It was very funny. <laughs> so, trust me. If you're down, if you're doom-laden, if you're depressed... Congratulations! you finally managed to get through to Get Rich Quick. Oh, my God! This is my favourite programme! Hello? Yes, I have been trying to get through for a while. Three months, to be precise. My name? Brian Albumen. <laughs> Fire away with your pathetically footling eliminating question. What was the name of Hilda Ogden's fat, lazy husband in Coronation Street? <laughs> they must be talking working class. <laughs> you know about these things, Albumen. What's the answer? Oh, I don't, sir. I only watch EastEnders to remind myself of the sordid underclass from which I've struggled to free myself. <laughs> It was Stan Ogden. He was married to Hilda. He was played by Bernard Ewans. She was played by Jean Alexander and was awarded the OBE. Yeah, enough, enough. Hello? It was Stan Ogden. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Albumen. Tomorrow it's your chance to get rich quick. <sighs> How do you know these things? I never miss Coronation Street. It's the one programme on television where the people are as ugly as me. <laughs> Is there any way I can thank you? Several ways. You can say many thanks, or I'm very grateful for your assistance, or you have rendered me a magnificent service. Well, 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 or perhaps I could take you out to dinner. I couldn't go to a restaurant. My body odour would empty the place. <laughs> In that case, we shall dine here. Albumen! Sir! <laughs> The steamed scallops are very light. I can't have shellfish. I once had a contaminated winkle. <laughs> Poached chicken, perhaps? I prefer not to eat anything with a face. At least not on a first date. <laughs> Some salt, perhaps? Honestly, I'm not hungry. I had a tic-tac in the loo. A whole one? <laughs> Has anyone ever suggested that you might have an eating disorder? Dr. Primarelli says I'm bulimic and anorexic. Well, you eat nothing and still throw up. <laughs> it's my metabolism. Daddy says I'll always be disgusting, like Mummy. He had to take her everywhere by low loader. <laughs> now, at least I'll have my professorship. Uh, Dash. Oh, dear. Bad news, I'm afraid. While you were secretly scoffing your breath freshener, I had a call telling me that I am forbidden to change my vote on your appointment. I'd like to help you, but I can't. My hands are tied. You ever tried that, by the way? <laughs> God, I'm destroyed. What will happen to her, sir? Well, she'll have to resign, and she'll be forced to earn her living exhibiting herself in a freak show, trundling from town to town on a low loader. <laughs> oh, what about the uh, Perkin Warbeck Covenant of 1273, sir? Uh, of course! Of course! Since no senator may vote against his wife, marry me. And my vote will automatically become yours. Marriage? I have no dowry. Oh, what need have I of money? I have an enormous stipend. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't I, Albumen? It's gigantic, sir. <laughs> I accept your transcendentally humane offer. 
And I give you my word, Adonis, I will never so presume upon our marital connection as to ever expect you to wade through layer upon layer of blubber in a hopeless search for an erogenous soul. No, 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 no. I welcome the challenge. Why, only last year, I penetrated to the very core of the Matter Grosso. Oh, weren't those pygmies a handful, sir? <laughs> Welcome back to Get Rich Quick. Please meet and greet Brian Alberman. Good evening, Brian. Want to get rich quick? Well, here's a simple one to get you going. For 1,000 euros, what is the atomic number of lithium and when was this element discovered? Lithium was discovered in 1817, <laughs> and its atomic number is <laughs> three. Is the right answer. A prehistoric people who lived in western Tabasco <laughs> in the Gulf of Mexico around 1000 BC. Around 1000 BC. Correct. <laughs> I was on the back of a pack of tortilla chips. And... <laughs> For the first time ever on Get Rich Quick, I can unveil the 50 million euro question. Thank you, darling. You fond of poetry? Is that a question? <laughs> no. Oh, good. The question is about Poets Laureate. For 50 million euros, how many Poets Laureate have there been and who was the first one? 20, and the first one was Ben Johnson. 20, and the first one was Ben Johnson. Amazingly, that is correct. <laughs> but, oh dear, the second part of this question is harder than Warren Beatty after 50 Viagra. <laughs> Four Poets Laureate had names that shared the same characteristic. What was it? Oh, God, this is so easy. They all had Christian names and surnames beginning with the same letter. Pardon? <laughs> Christian names and surnames beginning with the same letter. They all have Christian names and surnames beginning with the same letter. <laughs> that is the right answer. Yeah! <laughs> and what were their names? You didn't ask me that. I'm asking you now, Einstein. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Okay, Colley Sibber, 1730 to 1757. Colley Sibber, 1730 to 1757. William Whitehead, 1757 to 1785. William Wordsworth, 1843 to 1850. Alfred Austin, 1896 to 1913. <laughs> oh, God, no! <laughs> Short puzzle week. Uh, shows for advice readers our quiz. Have you any for entering? What? <laughs> it's a word jumble question. <laughs> Hurting me, you're. <laughs> oh, Mr. Alberman. Mr. Alberman. Mr. Alberman. Victor Alberman. Ludorum, International Journal of Neurology. Did you undertake any special conditioning to prepare you for the cerebral onslaught of Get Rich Quick? <laughs> Indeed, I did. Last month, I changed my diet for financial reasons. I was saving up for a triple heart bypass operation. I don't need one at the moment, but with the length of the NHS queues, it's best to get your name down early. <laughs> oh, right. And so, I decided to buy the cheapest food available, namely, genetically modified food. To my delight, my IQ went off the chart, and I developed an ability to comprehend the most sophisticated philosophical and scientific concepts. So you'd say that GM food has made you fabulously wealthy. Oh, yes! GM food has made me fabulously wealthy. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh me, 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 me. Ah! Oh. Lefano, it's you. I know it is. 
Still German. Congratulations, Professor. I'm here to offer you the vacant seat on the Council for International Progress. Oh. So I am now one of the 13 shadowy figures who manipulate mankind. You also get 50,000 shares in China Inc. plus reduced price membership of Bupa. <laughs> oh, that is more than generous. If there's anything else I can do. Well, no. Not unless you can deliver the luscious Hannah Orkwood into my power. Consider it done. Luscious Hannah Orkwood! Professor Knut would like a word! <laughs> no, 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 she doesn't do single words. Oh. Please allow me to introduce my beautiful fiance. Charmed. Adonis, there's no need to pretend to find me attractive. <laughs> Hannah, I admit it. I find you ungainly and grotesque. <laughs> Nevertheless, on our wedding day, the Archbishop is going to ask me to kiss my bride. And if I am to avoid vomiting into the Queen's lap, <laughs> then we are going to have to practice <laughs> hard so as to desensitize myself to your peculiar lardy odor. I've never been kissed before. How do you... Mm. <laughs> I thought I'd given you the day off to spend all your newfound wealth. I know, but then I got to thinking, what would Professor Canute do without me, you know? And my needs are few, a, a modest emolument, my simple lodgings, the, the occasional bottle of Campari. <laughs> so I've given the money away. All of it? Well, the college has been good to me since my early release. <laughs> and in return, they've made me honorary member of Senate. And I voted for you, Dr. Awkward, to get you your professorship. Albumen. Sir. Go and fetch the punishment plank. <laughs> Give it to Master. Sir. Jonas, <laughs> you know what this means, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> you no longer have to marry me out of a misguided sense of chivalry. Albumen, you've made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it right, Adonis? Oh, I'm a professor! I'm a professor! Well, Albumen, it's just you and I alone again together. Yes. Sit up for your master. Yes. <laughs> Sit up for your master. Yes. Sit up for your master. Yes. Sit up for your master. Sit up for your master. Sit up for your master. Sit up, you'll do it yourself, your master. I can't be bothered! <laughs>